You were talking just a second ago about a, a heart healthy diet, a Mediterranean diet. Do vegetarians, such as yourself, get Alzheimer's at lower rates than meat eaters? Do we know that? We don't know that. Um, a lot of vegetarians like, like me still have dairy products, mm -hmm. so you're still getting animal fat. Mm -hmm. So it'd be very interesting to see if vegans uh, uh, get less Alzheimer's disease. And I've always wanted to do a study, you know, on some of, maybe some of the Indian populations, like the Jains who are vegans. But, um, and I hope we will someday. We haven't done it yet. Mm -hmm. And I don't know of any, anybody who has. But there's no data that surfaced that suggests that vegetarians are more well, the only data is that in the animal kingdom, carnivores, old carnivores, uh, get Alzheimer's. Old herbivores so far don't. Hmm. So if you look at the brains of the oldest, you know, hippopotamus, donkey, et cetera, uh, generally you don't see Alzheimer's in the herbivores. Um, but, you know, to be an herbivore human, you have to be a vegan, not just your average vegetarian who's also having dairy. Right. Thoughts on turmeric? So turmeric very effectively lowers amyloid production and aggregation in petri dishes. Uh, you know, the problem with turmeric is that um, or curcumin, which is the active ingredient, mm -hmm. is it doesn't get into the brain very well. So no matter how you, know, you could go to an all-you-can-eat Indian buffet 24/7 stuff yourself silly and you're still not going to get much curcumin into your brain. But there are other studies that say curcumin can have anti-cancer effects. There's a lot of good things about curcumin. Um, so what we're doing with Cure Alzheimer's Fund is we're developing curcumin-like compounds that, that actually do get into the that, brain. That get into the brain. And we have some. And, we're, and the idea is if, if we can find safer, safer ver safe versions of curcumin-looking like looking drugs, then we'll try those. And that's one of the ongoing projects at Cure Alzheimer's Fund. Hmm. Um, coconut oil. Everyone's talking about coconut oil still. I'd like to see a trial of coconut oil. I mean, mm -hmm. I'm intrigued enough by the anecdotes um, to be very interested. Uh, it has to be the right type of coconut oil, this virgin coconut oil. Like you can't just, you know, have any old stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm intrigued. So, but, you know, I've been, but in science, you're burned by anecdotes all the time. Right. Um, so um, until there's a real trial, jury's out. And there are companies that are, that are starting to do some trials now. So it's intriguing, but there's no, there's no real science that suggests that we're... No, but you don't throw it away. I mean, right. um, I don't do coconut oil, but, you know, if, if you had a very high f family, you know, strong family history and coconut oil, you know, you're taking the right stuff that's not going to raise your triglycerides too far. Right. And you're tracking about whether you can handle that much coconut oil. You know, I mean, it's not the worst thing in the world, mm. you know. So what do you do? Let's, since you said you don't do coconut oil, what are the things that you think that you do in your life to uh, lower your risk of getting Alzheimer's disease? Um, I talk to you. I stay intellectually engaged. <laughs> um, I stay socially engaged. Um, I am a vegetarian. I do think at the end of the day, we'll, I don't know, we, like I said, we, we don't know for sure, but mm -hmm. I think that will help. Mm -hmm. um, and the only herbal supplement I take is ashwagandha. Um, ashwagandha is uh, uh, Ayurvedic Indian herb made from a root. I think ashwagandha in Sanskrit means sweat of the horse because it smells really bad. Mm. Someone came up with this name. That sounds fantastic. I, yeah. I want some right now. But, but it's in a capsule. You can't smell it. And, um, but the problem with ashwagandha is a lot of the stuff you buy online is not good. So we've tried different ashwagandhas that are online to see if they have you know, these anti-amyloid effects, like we found, and only certain ones work. So, um, you know, uh, actually the one that works best comes from Douglas Labs, and you have to have a doctor get it for you. Hmm. But that one is the most potent for sure. But don't just run out and get cheap ashwagandha in volume from the web, because it probably won't work. Can transcranial magnetic stimulation be used to treat Alzheimer's? Trans TMS, transcranial, you know, stimulation, magnetic stimulation is being used and okay. it's being tried and there are clinical trials and there's lots of reasons to keep an eye on it and keep track of it based on the early data. Again, a lot of it anecdotal, but... Um, How would that work? How would it fit into our understanding of, of the disease? You know, you're, simul you're, sim you're stimulating brain activity. So you're stimulating synaptic activity 
which causes you know, other synapses to fire. So you're turning synapses on in the brain. It's like revving the engine of the car. Right. So it's helping the brain become more protective by being more active. Yeah. Same as social and yeah. intellectual stimulation, really. Yeah, right? you're revving it up. You're, you're getting synapses activated. And, um, you know, if you act, the idea is if you activate synapses, you not only get that temporary cognitive boost, mm -hmm. but you might also start, you know, just re replenishing, so to speak, the neural network. Um, so jury's out. But again, like, uh, like the coconut oil, it's good to keep, we'll keep an eye on it. And, um, and see how it goes. But you haven't seen anything with regard to that that would lead you to believe that it would actually interrupt the process at, at the amyloid stage or, or disrupt tau spreading from cell to cell or, or anything as specific as that? It would be a largely symptomatic okay. treatment. In other words, it's a, like a super way to try to boost cognition beyond like drugs like Aricept or Exelon or Reminil or Namenda. But it's, there's no reason to believe that transcranial magnetic stimulation would stop the pathology or stop the disease process that I know of.